Well, good evening to you. I'm meteorologist Nicholas Chaboso here at the Fox Day and Gulf Stream Center. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Next Weather, where we are discussing the weekend rain chances and even a severe weather threat. So let's get right to it. We thank you for joining us here on Next Weather, though. We're streaming live right now on Facebook and also on the Fox 10 Gulf Stream. Uh, checking in, uh, Miss Jones, nice to see you. Byron from Rockville. Uh, viewers from New Orleans, David from Wilmer, Jana from Satsuma, thank you for checking in on the Facebook chat. So we are talking about a little severe weather threat, not necessarily for this weekend. I, I, I really would be surprised if we did see anything this weekend, uh, severe weather-wise. Maybe one warning gets issued throughout the entire weekend, but that's about it. And when I say warning, I mean severe thunderstorm warning or tornado warning, uh, which I think the odds are very low. Our focus point really is Monday, where we do have a decent shot at some thunderstorms with a complex of thunderstorms that is rolling on in here. So we're going to break all this down for you here. First of all, let's look at the rain chances. This is kind of a newer graphic I uh, whipped up here. So this is rain chances hour by hour. Each line is the hour uh, over the next 24 hours. So see at 9 o'clock, we don't really have Anything. But I have a very small rain chance uh, that we incorporate overnight tonight. So here's your overnight hours tonight. There's that 10 to 20 percent chance rain. We'll look at the forecast models in just a second. But you might notice overnight tonight, guys, some uh, light rain or sprinkles. I don't think everybody sees it, so don't be surprised. Uh, you probably won't see it, but it's only a 10 to 20 percent chance. But there is a small, small, small chance, and don't be surprised if you do see a little rain overnight. But the main rain chance comes in tomorrow morning, and it kind of takes off from there. So we boosted in the morning to around 60 percent there. There we should have some little batch of showers rolling through, and I think we have scattered showers throughout the morning and maybe lasting into the afternoon. However, please understand that tomorrow, and much like Sunday, the coverage of the storms will be scattered. That means that some places will see rain, while others are seeing probably partly sunny skies tomorrow. So it's just going to be kind of depends on where you are and your conditions are going to change through the day. The best advice for you and your outdoor plans tomorrow is to of course, be ready for the rain because it's very likely that we could see something like that happening. But also keep an eye on the conditions yourself with the Fox 10 weather app. Use the radar and check where the storms are. The Fox 10 weather app will also give you lightning notifications. So it's a great tool to use. I highly recommend you download the Fox 10 weather app just so you can have that radar function or any good radar app that gives you a high resolution picture. Remember, the Fox 10 weather app does give you that high resolution picture that you can look at and see where the storms are. And it does get uh, it does allow you to get storm tracks as well, so it shows you the motion of the storms, and it even has a built-in future radar there. Uh, so a lot of stuff going on for event-wise across the region. Of course, we have Toucher Truck, and I see the comment uh, about Toucher Truck. I don't know what their plan is for rain. We are still planning on being out there tomorrow. I'll be out there from 10 until about noon, and I think it'll be Jason from noon to uh, 2 p.m., full duration of the event. Uh, and then I will come back here after that. Uh, but it's going to be kind of a play by ear thing. We could have some showers around. And that's not the only event happening across our area. I know we have a lot of stuff. So just have a rain plan in place and be nimble for whatever you have planned this weekend. Uh, but I do not think this is going to be a washout. I think you're going to be able to get some things done. Let's go ahead and get to the future cast here. So here we go. This is the AHRRR model. This is my most trusted model. Uh, this is one of our highest resolution models, and it has done the best job over the past few events. So at 6 a.m., we have a couple, a couple isolated showers across our area. The rest of us are dry, but we have mostly cloudy skies and maybe even a little bit of kind of fogginess out there. Uh, it'll be kind of high moisture for the start of the day. 9 o'clock. Only a handful of scattered showers. Notice a good chunk of the area there is drying. Where you see the white, that's just cloud covering. Where you see the green, that's the rain. Noon, there's a little batch of rain that pushes through this kind of light band right here. The forecast model has been consistent in showing that. It doesn't get too far. And also, I think for tomorrow, that beginning of the day, the highest rain chances are north and west of Interstate 65. That's Mobile County, points west, 
Provo County and points north, really. Uh, and then as we get to the afternoon, it does this more pop-up showers kind of thing. So what you're seeing is, like for example, in this particular version of the future cast, at 5 p.m. downtown Mobile, it's not raining, but if you drive up 43, it is raining. So, you know, this is going to be one of those things where one community might not get rain, another community might be getting rain. Uh, and there could be a little bit of a gusty wind or a really kind of strong thunderstorm with this, but I'm not expecting severe weather, as I mentioned, uh, significantly with this at all. Here's 8 o'clock, some scattered showers around again, and that'll probably dissipate towards the evening time. So this is a result. Our Saturday rain chance is a result of a system that's currently located over Louisiana and Texas. In fact, it's giving them some severe weather, uh, mostly over Louisiana at this point. The actual upper level impulse, the actual upper level system that's triggering that is going to roll into our area. And that's what's going to spawn, give the forcing to allow for showers and thunderstorms to form tomorrow. But it's spread out spotty scattered stuff then as we get towards the end of the day here you can see things are wrapping up and i think we get some kind of a lull period overnight saturday night and into sunday morning other forecast models are a little more aggressive with the rain coverage there i'm leaning on this model though this model tends to be one of the better ones so then let's go to sunday morning if you have church plan sunday morning or any other plan sunday morning be ready for spotty showers again and they'll pop up and it'll be kind of go time and we'll have scattered showers and storms around. Again, I think the western half of our area, that is west of Interstate 65, that's Mobile County points west, uh, Monroe County points west. I think that's where they have the highest morning coverage of storms. And look at the afternoon. That's a decent coverage from the HRRR model. So something we'll keep an eye on. I might have to make adjustments to the forecast numbers if this looks consistent. Uh, but the question for the Sunday round of storms is, can there be enough upper level support? Can there be enough forcing to literally force the storms to get going? Storms need something to kick them off, and we may be lacking some of that on Sunday. So this is an aggressive version of the future cast at this point, and we'll keep you updated. We had the rain chance right now on Sunday at 40%. Then I'm going to flip the page here, and we're going to look at Sunday night. This says Sunday through Sunday night. Sunday during the day, for our friends up to the north, uh, we do have an enhanced, a very large, enhanced risk of severe weather that goes essentially from the bottom tip of Lake Michigan all the way down to northern Louisiana. That is a very large level three out of five severe weather risk. Likely all modes of severe weather will be possible with this. Uh, yeah, tornadoes could be possible with this. Uh, damaging winds and hail in that enhanced risk area. That's Little Rock, Memphis, Nashville, Tupelo, um, all the way up to places like Indianapolis, and not including Chicago. Chicago's in a slight risk, but a very, very wide area there. This is the kind of dynamic system that's rolling across the nation. Around that, the slight risk, level two out of five, kind of your standard risk, we see this all the time, does kind of clip the northern portions of our area. This is more gonna be for uh, and when it gets to our area, Saturday night, or excuse me, Sunday night, Sunday night, when a line of storms will roll in here, we'll take a look at the future cast in a second, so I'll be able to clarify that. They do have a marginal risk for our area Sunday night, and we'll start to watch the storms as they roll in. Then as we go to Monday, Monday is kind of our focus day, because I think Monday morning, starting Monday morning, we will actually have the cluster of storms that's rolling in. And what you're seeing here on this map is a 15% area. That is the equivalent to the slight risk of severe weather. Uh, the same percentage level for the slight risk of severe weather. They don't actually label it as slight risk, the Storm Prediction Center. When I say they, I'm talking about the Storm Prediction Center. They are the ones that put out these outlooks for us. They don't label it as slight risk. They label it as 15%. But it's essentially the equivalent. And that slight risk encompasses the entirety of our area for a cluster kind of line of storms that will roll through beginning Monday morning. So beginning Monday morning and then lasting into the afternoon hours, moving from essentially west to east or northwest to southeast. And this forecast model here that I'm going to show you is actually a really good depiction of this. This is called lightning flash rate 
or flash density. This is a product here on the European forecast model. Uh, of course, a reliable global model. And what you're going to see in anywhere where you see color, that's the forecast model saying, okay, we could have showers or, excuse me, we could have thunderstorms there. We could have lightning ongoing. See through Saturday, it's kind of spotty. There's just little bubbles of lightning, so bubbles of thunderstorms there. But you will clearly see the difference between that and then what happens on Monday. So Sunday night and on Monday, you see these big clusters of lightning that are over Mississippi. This is a complex of storms that rolls in. This is 5 a.m. on Monday. Anywhere you see the colors, you have thunderstorms that are likely going on. And as we start our day on Monday, we have this cluster moving into our area. It doesn't look super impressive, but there will be simply some lightning with some of these storms as it rolls on in. This is 10 o'clock on Monday, and as the storms right over us, and then by the afternoon, finally, we start to see some clearing. One of the big ingredients for thunderstorms is thunderstorm fuel. Call it instability, the unstable, warm, moist, humid air that can fuel the thunderstorms. And I think we do have that on Monday, especially as we get through the day and start to heat up. The instability values will go higher. What that essentially means is there will be more energy for the storms to take advantage of. It's one ingredient in the severe weather formula, but it's a big ingredient. In fact, if you don't have the instability, you don't get any storms at all. So we will have that instability. So yes, I really do think that we will see thunderstorms across our area on Monday. Some of the question marks come with the other severe weather ingredients. That includes things like forcing, uh, so the actual forcer to get those thunderstorms to go, the actual spark to get thunderstorms to go. We might be missing some of that. This is kind of a glancing blow from this upper level system. The upper level system typically drives a severe weather threat. And yeah, I think this is going to be more of a glancing blow for us. Uh, so not a super elevated threat overall, and I think the wind shear parameters, again, are not super elevated with this. So those other two key ingredients there, I'm kind of saying, okay, we're not completely at a crazy high level. So I do not think the severe weather risk on Monday is exceptional, uh, but there is some kind of severe weather risk. So let's break down future cast again and break down what we can expect. So first of all, we're going to go through this version of Futurecast for the weekend. So I'm going to postpone this Monday thought and just talk about the weekend. Saturday afternoon, it does say that we have some scattered showers. This forecast model is not super aggressive with the coverage. There's our overnight uh, gap in coverage. And in fact, this forecast model says, hey, we might even see some clear skies. But then, by Monday, or excuse me, by Sunday morning, there we go, we have scattered showers around some thunderstorms, and that clears up by the evening time on Sunday. And then late Sunday night into Monday, here's that cluster of storms, and you see that big cluster well off to our north here? In fact, if I were to zoom this map out and get a look at the bigger picture here, this cluster of storms is what we're gonna be watching very closely, this line, if that line holds together, and you'll be able to watch this with us in real time on Monday morning, Matt will be in covering it. If that line holds together, that means we will have a daytime severe weather threat probably on Monday, based on the ingredients that are there. But it's really dependent on if that line is holding together. So we gotta watch that really closely. Uh, zooming back in here, there's the line moving through our area, 11 a.m. I think the highest severe weather threat will be for our inland folks, most likely. Uh, our inland areas north of Interstate 10, that's where the best dynamics will be to support strong storms. And in fact, this future cast model showing it pretty clearly there with a essentially a squall line rolling through our inland spots. So that's our severe weather risk on Monday. It is a risk. Not an exceptionally high risk, but it's a risk. Uh, some thunderstorms will be possible. So, so kind of the bottom lines for our Monday storms, Monday, into, Monday morning into the afternoon, all modes of severe weather are possible with a slight risk of severe weather. That's only a level two out of five. But we recommend that you stay updated for possible forecast changes. And once we get to Monday, just make sure you have ways to get watches in the mornings, just in case they are issued, and you will be good to go. Here's a look, uh, kind of early thinking at some severe weather threats for uh, Monday. Again, I think everything's kind of on the lower end of the scale. 
And I think all modes of severe weather are possible, wind, hail, and even an isolated tornado. But again, lower end of the scale at this point. Just want to keep, your, uh, keep updated on this as we get towards Monday. Other things to talk about. We do have the rough, rough surf down at the beaches. Our house share did a story uh, earlier today on that. A couple rescues happened down at the beaches. The boating forecast tomorrow, pretty rough. Uh, southeast 15 to 20, gusting 25. Five to eight feet for the seas and bays will be choppy tomorrow. And the beach forecast is extremely rough. A dangerous surf, four to six feet tomorrow. If you know anybody that is down at the beaches, Again, it's, it's probably, probably not going to rain all day tomorrow. tomorrow. And, and some, some people might try to squeeze out and get into the beach. Please be careful. Just, Just don't get in the water at this point. Four to six foot waves are not fun. Uh, they will throw you around and they will probably take you under if you're not careful. So you've got to be careful with it. And share this message for those that are visiting us. Let them know that, hey, there's a high rip current risk and we don't mess around with that. We've already had multiple water rescues over the past few days. And we don't need anybody um, to lose their life over this this year. We want to prevent that as much as possible. Uh, we are so adamant about this because this is our biggest killer on the Gulf Coast. I mean, it puts tornadoes and hurricanes to shame uh, how deadly rip currents are. And it's because a lot of people come down here are unaware of the threat. So, not to preach about this, but understand that if anybody is visiting high risk of rip currents, uh, and it is a dangerous thing. Looks like we could see improving conditions surf-wise on Monday. That line of storms will sweep through, and then we'll have better conditions by then. So, two to three feet is that surf forecast for them. Then let's move on. Here's your seven-day outlook after Monday in that round of storms. Look at that. I think we have a much better week towards the end of the week. I keep a small rain chance that one of the forecast models the European really does try to keep some rain around or some moisture around starting on Wednesday. GFS is not so enthusiastic about that, so that's, so that's why I'm keeping the rain chances low. Otherwise, temperatures in the low 80s. It is going to be a warm picture for us as we get through next week. So be ready for that. Be ready for that spring-like feel. I don't see any significant cold air coming our way in the next 7 to 10 days. But looking at some of the long, 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 long range models, yeah, we might want to look at, uh, what would that be? That would be after Monday. See how the high temperature on Monday goes down to 77. We might have a couple cool mornings back there, but I don't think it's going to be freezing mornings. But that's way off in the forecast model. So uh, just something I saw when kind of doing the forecasting earlier today. All right, so if you have any questions, I am on the Facebook chat, so I'll keep an eye on things for sure. But otherwise, we're good to go for the weekend here. I'm going to be here all weekend. Keeping you updated on the storm threat. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the thunderstorms that happen Saturday and Sunday again. I don't think the severe weather threat is crazy. Uh, and I think it's very, very low, in fact. But we'll keep an eye on things for you. Uh, of course, Monday seems to be our threat of more significant storms or possibly a line of storms rolling through in our inland spots. And then we clear out after that. I think Tuesday will be a wonderful, wonderful day. So again, we thank you so much for joining us here on Next Weather. This is, of course, our Friday edition. We do this pretty much every weekday uh, that we have the staffing for it every weekday. Uh, Around 2.30 p.m., sometimes we do it at 6 or 6.30 or 7, kind of depending on how the day is shaping up for us. We always try to go live and provide you the latest forecast update on what's next in the forecast. So we thank you so much for joining us, as always, here on Next Weather. We'll be back with Jason at 9 and 10 p.m. for the newscast. Of course, I think we're a 30-minute newscast night because of sports. But again, thank you so much for joining us. I'll leave you with a 10-day outlook, and I'll see you this weekend.